Welcome, welcome to video tutorial number seven. This is the official Kraken YouTube channel where we are building the KV5 TT kit, bag by bag. We're gonna be working on bag F today. We're in block 29, page 18 in your manual. Let's get started. So here we got the transmission completely laid out. We're gonna, first we're gonna be building the spur assembly. Nate, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's start building. Nate, go ahead and grab the slipper shaft, put it out here. We went ahead and primed the threads uh, on the assembly here, on the shaft. And next we're going to slide on the slipper disc. Looks like this right here. Mm -hmm. We're Just gonna make sure th that the flat end goes through like that and press it nice against this little retaining wall right here. And make sure it seats all the way down before moving on to the next step. Okay, Nate, so now go ahead and grab your spur gear and we're gonna be installing the slipper plates onto the spur gear. Now guys, make sure that you pay attention in this step, it's very important. You wanna take your slipper plates and you want to drop them into the channel or the grooves that are cut out into the spur gear. There are grooves created on the outside of this circle right here that will match the circles on the inside and we're gonna have to lay it nicely in here, make sure that it fits um, snug. Okay, now flip it over and do the other side. While, while flipping it over, you wanna make sure that you hold it and pinch it uh, just to make sure that it stays in place. So what he's gonna do here is while, while pinching the two slipper plates and holding them in place, he's gonna slide it onto the spur gear. Oh, the spur shaft, I'm sorry. And now what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna wanna double check once you're, once you're at this step that those slipper plates didn't move. So what's gonna happen is if, you, if these slipper plates move during assembly and they're not uh, seated into the spur gear, is you're gonna have binding in your transmission and you're gonna have to um, disassemble your transmission and go back through it and rebuild it again. You don't wanna do that. So uh, while putting this assembly together, make sure that those are seated in there. So go ahead and we're gonna move on to the next step. Let's grab the slipper disc and install that flat side down. All right, so this looks good right here. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next block. Okay, we made it to block 30. We're gonna be installing the disc springs and tightening them down with the adjusting nut. So that's what they look like right here. And when installing these, make sure that it's the correct orientation. You want the uh, rounded end facing outward for the first one. You slide it down onto there. And it fits into the plate with its little groove that was created in there quite okay. nicely. So the second one, you're gonna reverse that. So the first one, you put it down with the uh, rounded end facing out. Now you're going to put the rounded end facing downward so it's opposite. And once again, you're gonna put it opposite on the third one. The rounded end facing outward, correct. So this step is very important. Uh, pay attention to that orientation. So next, you're going to put your adjusting nut on. You're gonna to wanna to put this end down. Okay guys, so we put just a, a little bit of blue Loctite down in the uh, threads of the nut. We're gonna slide that in place. So you're gonna kinda of have to work it here. You're gonna to have to try to keep the disc springs from moving around while you get the adjuster nut uh, seated and threaded down. You'll notice that the adjusting nut will bind if, if the disc springs are out of place, as you can see here. But you just kinda keep working the nut down. Little by little, you'll just keep adjusting the springs to make sure that they're, e they're, they're level, they're even, and you'll get down there. So he's going, basically what he's doing here is he's gonna go as far as he can with his hand He's gonna get as tight as he can. And then we're gonna use a crescent wrench. And this is, this is something that we get asked a lot about here. Uh, how tight should I make this? Well, 
you want it tight. You want those springs collapsed. And then we're gonna back the adjuster nut off a quarter of a turn. So he's gonna start uh, tightening here. He's gonna use a T-wrench on the eyelet on the other side so that he gets the proper amount of torque. He's gonna slide it down in here. Right like that. And then he's gonna get a big crescent wrench and he's gonna start tightening. We'll show you how tight. You're gonna see it. You're gonna see those springs start to collapse. You're gonna wanna pancake them down flat. He's gonna, he's gonna have trouble tightening it. And that's when you know you're tight. And then we'll back it off one quarter of a turn counterclockwise. See, I'm even able to go a little bit more. So I'm tight there. I'm collapsed. You want that baby tight. So now what we're gonna do is when you're looking at it, you got it facing you like a clock. So you're gonna do counterclockwise a quarter of a turn. Right there. And that's it, that's set. We got our blue Loctite on there. It's tight, let's put the, um, let's put the uh, screw in there and, and lock it down. We're gonna use our 2.5 T-wrench here and make sure that this is thread locked and primed before we do anything. And then we're gonna make sure that the adjusting nut uh, the way that we're going to insert this is on, there are two sides to this. There's one with threads and then there's one without. We're going to put it in through the one without threads so that it has something to grab onto. So a little bit more information on the adjusting nut. So the reason that we tightened down the adjuster nut so much and secured it in place is because we do not want this to back out. If it does back out, your car's not gonna go anywhere. You're gonna have a bunch of power going to the spur gear and it's just going to spin. The wheels aren't gonna move. So if you're having the same problem, then this is something that you need to check out. You wanna make sure that you check and see if this nut loosened up. If it did, you need to go back in and you need to tighten it back down. All right, so now we've gotten this far on the spur assembly, we're gonna go ahead and move into block 31. All right guys, in block 31, we're gonna be attaching the drive cup and uni yoke joint onto the spur assembly. We're gonna be uh, assembling with O-rings. Uh, go ahead and grab your spur assembly. Let's do the drive cup side first. This guy right there. Actually, let's go ahead and put the bearing on first, both sides bearing. They'll just slide on there, there you go. Same thing on the other side. Slide them down flush. Okay, now go ahead and slide your drive cup on. Okay guys, pay attention which side the drive cup goes on. It goes on the same side with the disc springs and the adjusting nut. Okay, there you go. Now you wanna take your barrel screw, screw pin. You want your 4.0 T-wrench. And find the side with the threads on the top. It'll be a larger opening and align it with the um, the opening. Remember to put your blue Loctite here. So along with the thread locker that we used for this, we're gonna go ahead and prime it as well. Prime both the screw pin and the drive cup threads. Okay, now roll the O-ring on like we did in a previous video. On. And now the next side, Barry. And then this little guy right here. Okay, get your wrench, T-wrench. So we have our 4.0 T-wrench, and before we do anything, we're gonna make sure we prime the threads in here, along with the screw, and then apply some blue thread locker to this. Don't forget your O-ring, once you got that tight. I feel the force is strong within you. <sighs> ring monster so that's the end of block 31 in the next section we're going to be installing the clutch bell and the pinion uh, gear and let's let's move on moving straight into block 32 we are we got our front transmission plates we got our clutch bell we got our pinion gear and we're going to be installing those so go ahead and grab your transmission plate okay so here basically what we did was we already pre-installed the bearing what we did was we first we took um, the plate without any bearings in it and we sprayed our primer in the hole both all three holes 
And then we took the bearing and we sprayed the primer on all outside of all three of the bearings. And then we used our bearing retaining compound Loctite 638. What you do is you take the bearing in one hand and then you kind of just slide it and you put and you drizzle the green on there and then you seat it in place and you want to make sure these bearings are sitting flush. If they're not sitting flush, your transmission is going to bind and you're not going to run smoothly. So make sure that they're flush to the plates. All right, Nate, let's go ahead and take the transmission. You want the motor mounting side facing away from you and then you take your clutch bell and you put it in this way, inside the top bearing hole. There you go, just like that. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take your pinion gear, which is this guy right here, and you wanna slide it into the chamber. It can only go one way, it's got teeth, and it has to fit into this portion. It has to fit all the way down on there, What's gonna happen is if you don't fit all the way down in there, you're gonna get binding. This is an important part that you need to make sure this goes all the way down. Okay, so he's just tapping slowly all the way around, little by little with the hammer, so not to damage the gear, but make sure that it's sitting in all the way on the clutch bell. Okay, he's good there. Now we got our pinch washer goes on the gear side, sits in there. Okay, and then we have our clutch bolt, which is next to your left arm there. This is going to get primed, and then this is going to get red thread locker. So I'm put. I'm, I'm using. I'm using uh, just enough red thread locker here so that the bolt stays in place. But when it is time to pull it out, it's going to be in there really good. You're going to have to use a torch to get it out and uh, heat it up really well. But it'll come out, no problem. Too much, and you're never going to get it out. So just just be sparingly, but use enough. So go ahead and thread that in there. He's going to go. You're gonna use your hand on the clutch bell side and you're gonna hold it in place while you're threading it so that the clutch bell doesn't move. He's gonna use a, a he's gonna use a crescent wrench to tighten down the clutch bolt. This clutch bolt, it's a bear. You're gonna have to work it, but bear with it, it'll go down in there. Okay, so if it's starting to get if the bolt is starting to get too tight and the and the clutch bell is spinning in your hand, there is actually a hole on the other side you can use and you can jam it with a t-wrench in place and that way you can get the proper torque on the screw if you can see but there's a hole right in this right in there where you can jam a t-wrench in there so that you can get the proper amount of torque so you slide it in there and you hold this tight and you take your crescent wrench and tighten you just gotta go back and forth. Okay, now we're gonna check it. Make sure that it's spinning smoothly. Everything looks good. If you have any crunching here or any binding, you're gonna just have to back this off just a hair until it's spinning freely. That looks good. Now moving on to block 33, we're gonna take hold of our step gear right here. And if we remember, uh, if you don't already have it in here, we're gonna take this bearing, make sure that we apply our green retaining compound. This is Loctite 638. And uh, be sure to prime it beforehand and then just lay it in here, make sure it's flush. All right, so we're gonna take our step gear and slide it into this first bearing here. We're gonna have it mesh with this pinion gear right here. Now we're actually gonna put in the larger side, the larger gear of the step gear in first because what happens is if we put the smaller one in, it doesn't have enough grab. There's, there's too much um, play here and it's not gonna work properly. So we're gonna put this larger gear in first and have it mesh with this gear. All right, so we've got our step gear in place. Now we can move on to block 34. All right guys, in block 34, we're going to be assembling the two transmission pieces together with the spur assembly in the middle. Um, here we're going to install our two bearings into the back smaller plate. What we need you to do here is we want you to prime the hole 
and the bearing first before installation. Use your 638 bearing retainer on the outside of the bearing and then set them in place to make sure that they are flush. What we're gonna do here is we're also going to bearing retain here. We're gonna bearing retain here on the bearings themselves. And let's go ahead and show you a little bit of demonstration how we put the green on there. Just spin it with your finger, get it all the way around, get a nice coating on there. That should be good. See how I'm just working it all the way around. Okay, so we, we got the retaining compound onto the bearing. Now we're gonna do inside of the transmission plate hole as well, all the way around, just work it around. You can use your finger to smear it. Same thing on this side, all the way around and coat it evenly. Now let's go ahead and install the spur gear. So we wanna use the drive cup, this one facing towards the front of the car or the clutch bell side. You slide that in there and all your gear should uh, mesh together. They should spin freely if everything's seated properly. Make sure that bearing is pressed all the way down. Now take your backing plate and what you're looking for is you're looking for these two brake screw holes to be facing towards the back of the car and you slide this on and all these gears should line up. You'll hear a click to make sure everything's flush and then you can give it a spin and that sounds good. That is not binding at all. What do you think, Nate? Looks good. All right, that's the end of thir block 34. Let's move on to block 35 where we're going to be putting some brackets on the top and some brakes. Here we are, block 35. So in this block, we are presented with a bracket that we're gonna screw on to the top of here. Now, if you notice, the bracket has one end where there is an opening right here. You wanna make sure that that opening leaves room for this hole on the assembly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the bracket on here. So we're gonna take these screws right here and we're gonna use our 3.0 hex wrench and we're gonna make sure that these are thread locked. We're using our blue thread locker and then we're also gonna prime them as well. So now to fasten this in. Now when tightening this down, you wanna go in a cross hatch pattern. So you start here, come over here, back there, and back across so that you get an even tighten all the way around. So now, Nate's got the Screws tightened down, he's going to grab the brake cam shaft bushing here. You're going to slide that down into place. Only goes one way. You may have to tap it with a hammer, Nate. Make sure it's sitting in there flush and goes down evenly. So we will put our brake cam shaft in here. We're gonna make sure that this cutout is facing out here as we put it in. Slide it down there, make sure it bottoms all the way out. Now put your brake cam block in the hole. There you go, slide it in there. And that concludes block 35. Made it to block 36, we're gonna install the brake pads and brake disc here. Okay, to start, let's take one of our brake pads and hold it up in place, right there. Now you wanna slide your brake disc top of it, it will only go one way. And next you have your last brake pad. Go ahead and slide that up on top of that. I'm molding with the same pattern, just like that. Now let's put some blue. After we prime the screws, we wanna put blue Loctite. So what, you, what, are you, what he's doing here is he's gonna tighten it down just to the point where it's barely snug and maybe, maybe just back it up just here. So it's not too tight. If it's too tight, you might buy That's perfect. Nope, too much. Just bare, right there. Same thing with the other side. All right, Nate, give it a spin. Make sure there's no binding and that the brake is loose. But the screws are tight and we're good to move on to the next section. Alrighty, welcome to block 37. Here we're gonna be installing the rear drive shaft. Okay, let's go ahead and start by taking our uni hub. It looks like this, we're gonna slide it. Just like that, you want these flat ends facing outward. Next, we're gonna take our barrel pin and we want the threaded side pointing upward. 
and also we want the uh, opening to align with the other openings like so once you get it on you want to twist it so that this end is facing up and you look down in there to make sure that everything is line all the both holes are lined up evenly okay next I want to take these two parts and mate them together like so make sure that the holes line up you want to take your 5516 which is the smaller of the two pins you want to slide it in there's a there's a notch inside of the pin that notch faces outward to the out side where the set screw is going to mate into it so we'll go ahead and slide that in so now i have the pin placed inside of the drive shaft we went ahead and we primed the inner threads of the part and we also we also prime the set screw itself we're going to use red thread locker here we do not want this part to back out you're going to lose uh, your rear drive shaft and potentially put a hole in your gas tank so red here and you want to put the proper amount of torque on this set screw so I'm gonna get it down there I'm gonna get it tight and I'm gonna put some good torque on that that's what it should look like right there now we're on block 38 once you got that set you're going to slide very gently slide this part on here so as not to move your pins inside and we're going to use this is a 5517 pin and the pin slides uh, with the notch side face towards the, the, the threads up there so we'll go ahead and prime the threads and make sure the notch is pointing in that direction we're going to prime the threads here and we're also going to prime our set screw okay we're going to be using red loctite again here and tighten it down don't smash your co-pilot's finger put a good amount of torque here you want this thing so tight you do not want it to come out and there it is all right guys that concludes bag f we have completed the transmission assembly we want to check make sure everything is smooth one last time and it is look at it and it's all its glory thanks for watching stick around for our next tutorial when we build the frame upright and the chassis for the kb5 tt be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of our next release